Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppins Crack and it's Steve Boss reacts to another impressive vid. This one is titled Simon Kyle Calls One Direction Star Liam Payne's Demise and Liam's Struggle with Addiction and Fame. Oop. Um, so looking at the thumbnail, this guy was in the group that Harry Styles was in. I'm not familiar with One Direction at all, but RIP to this man. Um, and yeah, let's see why she's saying Simon Kyle had something to do with this. Let's see what's going on. Let's watch. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Impressive Channel. I'm pretty sure you all have been aware of the tragic news involving the singer Liam Payne. He was a part of the very, very popular group One Direction, which was put together on the show called X Factor. X Factor is Simon Cowell's show, and Simon signed the group One Direction to his record label, Psycho Entertainment. And the group went on to be one of the biggest music acts of the 2010s, you know. So hearing that Liam passed away was pretty sad and shocking to a lot of 1D fans. But how he passed away was even more shocking. He actually fell off the third floor of a hotel that he was staying at in Argentina. It was said that he was under the influence. He was high. He was acting erratic. The hotel room was completely trashed. And they found out that he had a slew of substances in his system, including benzos, which are anti-anxiety meds and anti-depression meds. Mm. He had some crack. He had pink Coke. And this is also known I as Tusi. Like Tusi is like a concoction of Coke, ketamine, and ecstasy. It's like a dangerous recreational substance that crack people use. Crazy. I did hear that Diddy was on the Tusi as well. So... It doesn't seem to be too uncommon, but it is very dangerous. And Liam was on this. They also found alcohol in his room as well. So all of this stuff was in his system. So it really explains why he was acting out the way he did. And he ended up throwing himself off of the balcony. It's really unfortunate. And a lot of people were heartbroken over it. His friends, his family, his fans, they all were heartbroken. You know, his Thank band members, you. Harry, Zayn, Neil, and Louie also sent I mean, out you can tributes, break your neck, so. and they were very heartfelt. I'm not going to read through them all, but they were very heartfelt, and you could tell that they're broken up over this because they didn't just lose a bandmate. They lost somebody that they considered to be a brother. They spent so much time with Liam during the times of One Direction, so... This is a big loss I'm for them. Baby. It's even a bigger loss for his family, especially his mm. son, Bear, you know? But Liam was very troubled. You know, he was very troubled and he was struggling with his addiction for a very long time. In fact, he started his substance abuse when he was in One Direction. You were having moments of that, that kind of like ideation. You were having moments of sit down ideation. And... Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some stuff that I've definitely like never, never spoken about to do with it. It was really, really, really weird. And it was a problem. And, and, and it was only until I saw myself after that I was like, right, I need to fix myself. Mm. There's like a few pictures of me on a boat and I'm all like blowing out and I call it Pills and Booze Face. When we were in the band, the best way to secure us because of how big it got was just lock us in our rooms. And of course, what's in the room? Mini bar. Mm. So at a certain point I thought, well, I'm going to have a party for one. And that just seemed to carry on throughout many years of my life. And then you look back, how long you've been drinking and stuff, and you're like, Jesus Christ, that's a long time. Even for someone who's, you know, as young as I was. Is there, was there, is there a moment where you look back and say that was the lowest moment to me? That was the pivotal moment? I had a few of them. I was worried how far my rock bottom was going to be. Where's rock bottom for me? And you would never have seen it. I'm very good at hiding it. No one would have ever seen it. But rock bottom, it, I, I, I mean, I don't even know if I hit it yet. Whew, wow, that was pretty telling. But Liam said that his issues really started in one direction. And it just seems to me like it was some gross negligence because he was underage at the time. He should not have had access to alcohol. So that's a red flag. And it looks very bad on Simon Cowell because this was his group. Why wasn't his group being cared for? You know, especially since they were underage. I mean, he can't that raises a lot of questions. And it kind of makes you wonder what were these guys exposed to? What did they go through? Were they also victims in the industry? I mean... We know how dark the entertainment industry can really be. We know that a lot of these child stars grow up to be troubled a lot of times because they get taken advantage of and exploited and violated in unimaginable ways. And they have to cope with that. And a lot of times they cope by using substances, unfortunately. And I do wonder if this is what happened to One Direction. Now, Simon Cowell's name is getting dragged through the mud because... People feel like he played a role 
in Liam's demise. Now, he did recently come out and issue a statement regarding Liam's passing. He said that he was heartbroken and devastated over Why it. Why are blaming But him the though? fans what? are not buying it because Why? they feel like Simon only cared about making money off of Liam and oh, his band man. members. He didn't really care about their well-being. In fact, one of the former X Factor contestants named Katie Waisel called out Simon and said, the tragic loss of my dear friend Liam Payne highlights the urgent need for change in the music industry. I'm calling for an immediate investigation into psycho entertainment for negligence and breach of duty of care. Oh. Artists are not commodities and their well-being must be prioritized. We need new laws to protect the safety and mental health of all in the industry. No more profit over people. Let Liam's story spark the reform we desperately need. Now, Katie has been very vocal against Simon. In fact, she sued his company, Psycho Entertainment, for breach of duty of care. And she claims that participating on his show, The X Factor, ruined her life. You know, she suffered from PTSD because she was labeled the most hated of the season. And she claims that the whole structure was very toxic. There was a lot of manipulation and coercion behind the scenes. Not only that, she said this, Simon Cowell continued to employ my attacker with the knowledge of what had happened to me documented in communications via legal teams. It wasn't until there was another alleged incident a few years after that ever so strangely that employee was then allegedly relocated overseas. Hmm. Now that right there sounds very odd. It makes Simon look very suspicious if what Katie is saying is true. Why would he allegedly be hiring attackers and abusers to be a part of his entertainment company? Why would he allegedly cover up an incident involving one of his employees? That's pretty alarming to me. It really is. And it kind of makes me wonder if something might have happened to some of his artists, especially some of the members from One Direction. I don't know. I just get the feeling that something might have happened to some of the members in that group. But a lot of people are blaming Simon for Liam's demise because they felt like he was taking advantage of him and his bandmates. He really didn't care about them. All he cared about was the money. And when he was asked about what his biggest regret was regarding One Direction, he said that he regrets not owning the name. <laughs> One thing I regret is I should have kept the name. Oh, you should have owned the name? I should have yeah, owned okay. the name. You didn't own the name? No. Who owns the name? They do. Oh, okay. That's the problem. Name? Could have made an animation or whatever. Um, but when you give an artist the name, it's not yours. And that's my only regret. So his main focus was always the money, not okay. necessarily the well-being of his artists. And that's why a lot of the fans don't really like Simon right now. But what Simon did is no different from what other record label executives do. I'm literally going to say that in this video. Like, the industry as a whole is toxic. But I feel like people just want someone to, to blame and to burn. I feel like social media is so toxic. Everybody just wants to pull out the pitchforks and look for someone to cancel next and to demonize next. When this man has just lost his life, RIP to him, very sad situation. It, it just seems odd to shift that focus to, well, let's see who's at fault and why did you do da da da, you demon and you are horrible. And it's just so, so bizarre. A lot of these executives don't care about the well being of their artists. And All what did he do about... directly to cause this particular situation? Like, y'all talking about, you know, business dealings and not being there for the artist mentally and keeping their mental health in mind and shady business. Okay, but this particular situation, like, I just, mm, I just think it's odd to to make that, that leap and say that, oh, well, Simon, you're responsible for his death. Like, huh? Is the that's money crazy. flowing in. So as much as people want to blame Simon, he didn't force Liam to get high on Tusi. He didn't. I think Liam had his own struggles. He had struggles for years. I would say it, but I implied it. That's, there, there it is, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, can you really say, oh, Simon, you're completely at fault for what? 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 He, he might be at fault for a lot of things. I don't know nothing about Simon and his, his business dealings. He could be terrible for all I know. And he, he could have, you know, handled them um, incorrectly in many ways. But... Again, this is a big breach to say that he's responsible for this man's death. That's crazy.
thing. He really started unraveling after the Group One Direction disbanded, and I believe he had some struggles navigating in the industry as a solo artist. I mean, he wasn't as popular as Harry Styles or Zayn Malik. Nobody is. Oh, he didn't seem to be as stable and content in his career as Louis and Neil. It just seemed that he was just yeah. lost, and he was battling addiction, mm. obviously. Well, he, he got dropped from his daughter? label, Jeez. Universal Records, which was another <laughs> blowback. And he kind of went through a series of unfortunate events. I mean, for one, the fan base turned on him because they felt like he was annoying and attention seeking and his antics were a bit off. Also, they didn't like the comments he made about his bandmates in this interview he did on the Impulsive podcast. From what I've heard is that like, part of the reason One Direction was made was because of Simon's promise to me that in two years, I'll make this work for you. Wow. So he kind of started with my face and then worked around the, the, the rest. I've never told that story before. You, you, were, you wow. were the inception. I was the honorary member of One Direction, yes. And he told me that story himself in his head. I think it was well known within the band that I don't like taking right, right. at a certain point. I made it very obvious. I'm not going to tell you how. <laughs> um, and there was one moment where there was an argument backstage and someone, one ma member in particular, threw me up a wall. So I said look very goofy here. Maybe because he's a highlight which I'll never use them again. What was what did he say after that? <laughs> oh, he just took his hands off. Okay, I see this all the time everywhere. Um, I've heard this in several stories so many times, and he told me it was Zane, so. Now when Liam made these comments about him being the reason why One Direction was created and him getting into it with Zane, it just kind of backfired and he got a lot of backlash on the internet. Even though what he said could have very well been true. People just didn't like the fact that he said it, you know, they didn't like him at times. And I know that he's receiving a lot of love now, but when he was alive, he was getting dragged Ooh. quite often. Also, Liam got into some controversy with his ex-girlfriend, Maya Henry. She actually wrote a tell-all book exposing their Ooh. relationship. It was a book loosely based off of their relationship called Looking Forward. And she detailed some pretty disturbing things. At first she said what she wrote in the book was true, but then she came out and said some of the stuff was exaggerated. So I don't really know what's what, but I do know that she didn't have the best relationship with Liam. I mean, I'm not gonna go too much into me talking about the damn book, but, oh, that was all fake, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. Ever since we broke up, he messages me, blow up my phone, mind you, not only from his phone number, he oh, it's always from different phone numbers too. So okay. I never know where it's going to come from. He'll create new iCloud accounts to iMessage me. And he does this when he gets his phone taken away. Also, not only me, but he'll blow up my mom's phone. Oh. And is also messaging my friends. And he says that he preys on One Direction fans because they will always be loyal to him and they won't tell on him. He knows that... He can get away with anything. He's told me. And, oh, don't you dare, don't tell anyone because they're not going to believe you anyways. Like, the fans always have our back. We can do whatever, you know, we want, and they're always going to defend us. And he's right. But, yeah, also talking sh about your bandmates and then showing up to their concerts. But it's always for your own benefit. It's not even because you actually just want to go support. You want to go stand up there and, like, take the attention away from everyone. Maya was also about to take legal action against Liam because he and his people kept contacting her in the midst of her releasing her book. One of his friends actually contacted her and told her not to release the book because if something happened to him, then she would be blamed. I mean, up even until my book was coming out, even one of his friends was calling me and my mom being like, oh, you know, this is just, isn't a good time for him. I don't think you should put the book out. You know, he's not doing well. And if something happens to him, not only are you going to blame yourself, but the whole world's going to blame you. Dang. And so I was like, Dang. just the fact that they just keep trying, I'm like, yeah, it is, it. Like, like you said, such a low manipulation tactic. Okay, it's, that's what happened. Now, Maya is definitely not to that's be blamed scary. for what happened to Liam, but... I do think her releasing her book at the time she did was definitely not the best timing. And unfortunately, yeah, she's getting criticized. But, but honestly, again, Liam had a lot of there. issues. Yeah. A lot of issues. But that, not know, only with his addiction, but he even admitted that, you know, he had some mental issues. I'm definitely clinically insane, but I just haven't copped onto it yet. I just don't tell that. <laughs> cut that bit out. <laughs> 
he jokingly admitted that he might have some mental issues. So that is another thing to consider. So I don't see why people are blaming his ex for what happened to him. You know, he had his issues, but his passing is still very, very unfortunate. It is. Anyway, tell what you all think of. Very sad situation. Uh, RIP to him. But yeah, I just think it's incredibly toxic and mentally unstable to be on the internet uh, blaming other people for someone's death. That is so, so weird. How does that solve anything? How does that bring him back at all? It's just very strange. Mourn him, pay your respects, and move on. People are weird. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all the next one. Bye!